Hi, this is Mike Green, Dodgy on the Lightwave forums, and I'm just going to show you how to achieve a 2D looking face on a 3D character, um, just like the Lego characters in the Lego movie. So let's have a look at this in Lightwave first. I'll just play through. You can see it's nicely animating and it's wrapped around the 3D head. So let's have a look, see how we achieve that. Um, first, we'll go into Modeler. Now you can see here I've got my 2D character, or my 3D character's head selected. And what we have is a UV map with that head laid out on it. So uh, you can have any shape head, um, you can have any shape UV map on it. Um, and I've also got this, um, the face as a separate object, so it's just those polygons there. Okay, and then in a second layer, I've got a model of the 2D face that we're going to animate. So this is made up of uh, metanerbs. Uh, you can see here it's um, just all in a planar format. If we have a look at the uh, morph maps for this, we've got eyes closed, happy, look left, right, look up, and then you've got some um, morph targets for actual talking, which use the Papagayo uh, morph set. So that's just so you can easily load in um, some animated talking from the Papagayo program, which I wrote a, an importer for. Um, so that's the two important parts. You've got your 2D face, and you've got your 3D object with a UV map on it, ready to have that face like splatted onto it. And if we switch back to layout, what we've done here is we're using uh, the nodes set up to create this. So how do we do this? Well, we start off the main function that we're using here is the ray trace function, which comes as part of Lightwave. And that basically fires a ray from a given position in a given direction, and it tells you what color that the ray hits. So in this case, it's going to be the face of the character. Uh, and we've got, going into that, we've got the two parts that we needed from the other thing. So this item info tells us where the face is. So that's the center of the face. Okay. Uh, and it also tells us the direction that the face is pointing. So that's what the world forward is. Okay. So that gives us uh, the world position of the face. So you can move the face anywhere in layout. If I just show you that, where it is. I've actually got a camera set up on the face. So if we just have a look around here, you can see the face is over here. I can switch to the camera. And what's happening is that face is being animated using Morph Mixer. So here we go. You've got your expressions, and you've got your Papagayo um, morphs going up. Okay. So you can completely do your animation in here, just looking at the face, setting it up, getting it ready, and uh, then when you're ready to go back to your main character, you can just switch back to the main camera and animate that as well. So, So if we look at these nodes, what we have is that face telling us where we're going to get the ray from. Okay. So if you imagine the center of the face is where the rays are going to be fired from. 
uh, and the direction is going to be right at the face from in front of it. So to get the position, we take the world position of the face, a, the exact center of the face, and we subtract the world forward d uh, vector from it. Now that basically moves the position from the center of the face, actually in the face, to in front of the face. Okay, um, and then we're using this UV map, the UVSP that we set up, to offset that position across the, the surface of the face. So um, it basically goes, okay, the UV point is up in the corner. I'll move the start of the ray up into the corner of the face. And then as the face is drawn in light wave, that UV will move across the face and that will move the ray um, start position across the face, like, like, like a TV, like scans, lines across, if you can imagine that. So we're taking just the X and the Y of that UV map from the U and the V, okay, and making that into a vector uh, with nothing in the Z. So that's just giving us our sort of coordinates moving across the face. Uh, we're subtracting 0.5 from those because we want the UV map to be in the center uh, at 0, 0. Okay, so you have to move your UV map down and to the left. So the UV map center is basically uh, at 0, 0 in world space, as it were. Now that means you could set up your UV map so that the center of the UV um, thing is at zero zero and not use this but I just prefer to do this because um, I'm using sort of I like to use my UV maps where they normally are so that's what the subtraction is doing okay and then I'm adding that value to the value we got from there so that basically offsets the world position of the ray using the UV map and if you look at the the texture map here, or the sort of the, the face, we can see that it starts at minus 0.5 and finishes at 0.5 in both directions. So it's basically a meter square object. So that gives us our position of the ray where it's shooting out. And then the world forward gives us our direction because world forward is pointing down this axis. If you look, there's the minus Z axis, and this is the plus Z. So world forward for this object is that way. So the direction that we're going to fire the ray is that way. Okay. So that gives us our ray trace um, inputs. We've got the world position from there and the world direction from uh, that object as well. That way you can turn the object around and it will always be looking at the that face as it were. And then we use that punched into the color to give us the color of the object. And that results in this. So if I just turn this around Oops. You can see the face is being textured with that 2D face, which is very funky. So I hope this has been interesting to you. Uh, this is the layout of the UV map. You don't need this. I used, I was playing around with uh, using an RN layer shader on it as well. Um, and so if you want it shaded, you could plug that in and then plug that into your color or into your diffuse shading but this is just using the uh, shading for the actual object so that's that is the node tree for this setup you can see it looks fantastic anyway uh, I hope you've found this informative and uh, um, maybe you'll do something you like that yourself bye